Welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration Series. Today we got a whole lot of Bionicle and plenty of Ben Cossey to tell you all about it. Hello, welcome. Today we're doing an extra special episode. It's all about video game inspired mocks. So I've done a few of these sorts of episodes in the past where we feature a bunch of mocks that all relate or have been inspired in some fashion by some sort of video game. Some of these, of course, can be more well-known popular video games. And of course, some of these will be ones that are less well-known, but that's kind of the fun of it as well. Of course, I think that's always such a great thing to do if you're looking for ideas of things to build, you're hungry to put some bricks and pieces together, but you don't know what you want to make. By all means, look to video games, look to television, look to all sorts of different fun media because there's a lot you can gain from it. And video games constantly have really good, creative, awesome looking character designs. And there's nothing better than making it in Bionicle or just system Lego form. So let's take a look at a bunch of people who've done exactly that and hopefully it'll give you some ideas and you can do it yourself. So the first mock we've got today is by our boy Jafa and it is the Skull Kid. So of course this is from Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask and it's a really freaking cool mock. So immediately one of the things that really grabs me about this is uh, the mask specifically kind of around the eye area. Just the amount of colors that have been put into that and how beautiful the shaping and just the general look of it is. It looks so accurate to the original source material and I think it's really creative and clever how he's managed to perfectly match that. So specifically what we can see here is the use of a few rubber band elements, specifically some in black, kind of around uh, the actual kind of pupils on that mask there. You notice those are just sort of, they kind of appear to be wrapped around some of the studs on some of those wedge pieces there. Uh, and they kind of just sort of flow nicely around that orange dish that makes up the sort of majority of the eye. Additionally, there's a few other rubber bands in white as well. Those are kind of just been used around the edges. And I think that's more just to get uh, just some of the nice kind of patterns that the mask like very typically has. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think I think that's a, a fine little touch. And, you know, for the most part, I would still argue that's totally purist, totally legal, whatever kind of word you want to use there. There's nothing, um, there's not really any stress being put on those pieces. I mean, they're rubber bands. You're meant to put a little bit of stress on them, but I think it's a really creative way to just get that little bit of extra detailing into something by grabbing some of the official or maybe even non-official Lego rubber band pieces and using them to get a bit more uh, detailing on something. I think it's flawless and beautiful. Additionally, too, the actual green, like, uh, middle kind of pupil of the eye there, it, I, I believe that is simply just using flex tubing elements there, uh, and that's just sort of being nicely inserted uh, through a um, yellow stud with a hole through the middle and, of course, that orange dish behind it. And you get that very sort of layered eye design there with all those different colors thrown in there. Uh, and you really effectively match the source material there. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, for the most part, very much appears to be purist. I have to double check with Jafer there, but I don't I don't think there's anything cut or being, you know, putting too much stress on anything or anything bad. So it's awesome to know that you could very easily do something similar if you want to specifically build this. Uh, or you could easily do something similar if you're looking to some other source material. Maybe it's worth playing around with some different rubber bands, or some flex tubing, some of those dishes or studs with holes through the middle. They're pretty versatile pieces and you can see their full potential being reached here for sure. I think that's um, beautiful. Some other system pieces that have been used on here, and I think to great avail, include some of these different plant pieces. We see some of the larger kind of palm tree elements in lime there being used uh, around the general chest area, and additionally some of these lime bushes being used as the kind of, um, I don't know, uh, sleeves on this guy here. I don't know the specific terms here, but uh, I think that looks absolutely awesome, and when we study that original source material there, Looks incredibly, incredibly accurate. Um, Jeff has done a fantastic job on this. I love too how he's used some of these flipper element pieces uh, in lime as well uh, on sort of the skirt area, kind of the pants on this guy here. Um, I specifically love that too because those flipper elements, yeah, you see them on minifigures as exactly that, flippers. Uh, and it's cool when you invert them like this, kind of put them upside down and layer them a bunch like that. They very much start to look a little bit more like leaves or possibly even some sort of like thatched roof. I've seen that technique before, but I just love how that looks. And I think, you know, if you yourself have a few flippers lying around or maybe you want to go on BrickLink and buy a few, it creates a really nice texture when you layer them like that. So it's something you could definitely experiment with, that's for sure. But, but seriously, I think those are, are fantastic part usages there of those plant pieces 
Uh, and I would argue maybe less the flippers, but the um, the two bushes and the palm tree element on the chest, I would argue those are a little bit more kind of commonplace pieces that I'm sure you have a few lying around in your collection. Depends on your collection, of course, but you you know, you, you look around, they're pretty easy to find in sets these days. Um, I know, for example, I bought a set this morning. It was a friend set, had some of those those palm tree pieces in them. It's a little, little one. I'll just go get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to have to move away from the microphone, so you're going to hear me for a sec, but I may as well give you the name of the set so that you can get it if you're like, Ben, I want these pieces. All right, okay, I got it, here. Shaky, shaky as I move the set around. It's a friend set, it's set number 41421. It's got a little baby elephant in it and it has some of those palm tree pieces. I'm gonna get a picture of that as well while I talk so that I can show it to you instead of just reading set numbers aloud on the screen. But you're seeing it right now, I don't know why I'm explaining this. Still, that's a set that has some, so if you want some of those plant pieces, you can. And the recent botanical collection flower set comes with some of those bushes. Not in line, but they're still bushes. So hey, something to consider. Um, but that's if you want to play around with some of those pieces. I think Jafe has used them in a fantastic way. And hey, you may as well use that technique yourself in your own mocks. Why not? You know, maybe give a bit of credit to Jafer if you want. Um, and uh, it, you could have come up with your own unique uses for it. And heck, it's a good technique. May as well play around with it yourself a little bit. Could be a good idea. So speaking of system sets and buying system pieces and using system pieces, I adore what Jafer's done here specifically with the boots and the hat. Looking at that original source material there, there is some absolutely beautiful consistency with how uh, they actually look versus how Jafe has translated it. The beautiful kind of like almost, um, almost like a, a fan of sorts, how the, the hat kind of flows down like that, how it sort of spools out like a flower. Spools? That's not a word. How it... I don't know the word to say. How it sort of flares out to the sides like that. Uh, Jafe has perfectly matched that there using some uh, different curved slope pieces. Uh, and then those boots, the perfect angle and very much making them look like a sort of old leather boot of sorts. Uh, Jafer's just absolutely nailed that. So I think um, pretty much the easiest way to do that yourself, if you're really looking for that awesome level of um, accuracy and consistency to the source material, just have a picture up very similar to the one you're seeing kind of thing and just really study it. Go, okay, how, how can I match that? All right, it's got this kind of curve to it. Maybe I should use some curved slopes. They'd maybe be able to achieve that and... A lot of trial and error, a little bit of uh, playing around and seeing what you can come up with. It might require you doing like two or three, maybe seven different versions, maybe even more than that, maybe even less than that. Um, just do your best to, to shape the pieces that you've got to try and match that, you know. There's no sort of surefire way to like perfectly nailing it. You're just going to have to keep experimenting and stuff. But you could, uh, with a little bit of practice and time and effort and stuff, you'll get something very similar to JFO where you just absolutely nail it. Uh, and make it look exactly like it uh, it does in the source material there. So seriously, a uh, fantastic job here, Jay, for this is just uh, an exquisite example of translating something into Lego. It's awesome. And great to see something from Legend of Zelda so uh, effectively translated. I think you did a, a bang-up job. All right, let's move on to the next mock now. This is a mock by, I believe, Daniel Brickson. I, I don't believe. It is by Daniel Brickson. I don't know why I had to second-guess that. Uh, and it is Mega Houndoom. So uh, Daniel says here on uh, Flickr that this is uh, Pokey Monday number 18. I don't know if he's still doing it. I haven't seen him post any in a while, but there was a time where Daniel was um, kind of like weekly trying to build a um, specific, just build a Pokemon. And I think his aim was to try and build all of them, which is quite a task. But, you know, if you build him a little bit smaller scale or some maybe a bit bigger like this, you know, yeah, over time you'll eventually get there. But uh, hey, it's a fun commitment, and maybe you yourself want to build uh, a Pokemon, because there's a lot to choose from, and a lot of the designs, I think, are absolutely gorgeous. Of course, Mega Houndoom, you know, specifically originated in the game, uh, you know, in Pokemon X and Y. And I mean, I mean, he's appeared in other games since then, but that's where he originally came in. Uh, and I've always really liked Mega Houndoom. I always thought he was really cool. I, was, I just thought he kind of had this aesthetic that, you know, some of the other Mega Evolutions changed quite drastically. But I like that Mega Houndoom was a little bit more sort of a subtle change. Almost like he just inherited some additional armor and just kind of got to, you know, buffed up slightly to some degree. I think it's a very subtle but very nice Mega Evolution. Um, personal opinion there, but I think he looks great. And I think Daniel's beautifully translated it into Lego here. So some things that I specifically like about this. Uh, one, I love how he's done the lower legs here. How they... Um, uh, just using some prefab uh, normal kind of leg elements, but how he's got those curved slope pieces and just sort of attach them on the sides there. 
perfectly matches that source material. Looks very accurate and very, very nice. Uh, I think it's a, a very nice addition. Very subtle, very simple, but it gets the job done. And hey, you don't always need to try something super complex and insane and wow. You can just go a little bit more simplistic. It works, you know? Uh, additionally, I absolutely love how he's done the kind of... I don't know, would you say it's bone armor? I always thought it was a little bit more metallic armor, but how he's done that white armor over the top here. He's prioritized a little bit more sort of system elements for it. And I like that that kind of makes this uh, white armor stand out a little bit more. You know, it is the sort of major difference on Houndoom, excluding a few other small things. Uh, when he mega evolves, that is specifically, that's kind of the main difference there. Uh, so I like the fact that it is kind of accented by the fact that it is system, which looks a little bit more alien to the sort of more... Um, it's more majorly Hero Factory sort of CCBS focused pieces here, uh, which I uh, personally really like. I think that's a very fitting choice. Uh, it makes it stand out a little bit more, makes it seem more different and unique. And it's a little hard to tell because it's it's this sort of animated uh, image of Houndoom. But I just kind of got the sense that the bone or metal armor would be a different texture to the rest of his fur. Uh, in fact, I, I'm almost certain it probably would be in this made up Pokemon world. Uh, so I think it's also quite fitting that the armor reflects that by physically being a different texture and a different type of Lego piece. So that's really cool. I also like how he's done the tail there. Very simple way of doing it using some of those uh, very small Technic panel pieces that came on a few of the Star Wars Ultra Build Lego sets there. It's a great way of mimicking that tail. And I also think he's very effectively matched the uh, head design for Houndoom here using a a few different system pieces, but also some uh, orange CCBS pieces. And I love how he's managed to attach the teeth in there. It kind of looks like they're all sort of balancing just underneath uh, the pink tongue there. It looks like they're attached to a droid arm, and that droid arm's just kind of resting underneath it. So not technically attached, it's just sort of being held together like that. Um, but it gets the job done, and it very effectively looks like his face, uh, which is, I think, really cool. And just a very subtle but fun connection. I think that's uh, fantastic. But yeah, this is a beautiful way of recreating uh, Mega Houndoom here. Uh, and of course, you, 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 hey, if you wanted to, really, you could uh, take a look at this and maybe just build Houndoom. It doesn't have to be Mega Houndoom. You can strip back some of the armor and you know, maybe see some of the little little things that Andrew's, uh, Andrew Daniel has done here. Uh, and you can maybe build it yourself. Or like I said, take a look at a whole bunch of other different Pokemon. There's heaps of them. Uh, and I'm sure you would certainly enjoy making some yourself, especially if you're a fan of Pokemon. And if you're not... Yeah, maybe it's worth studying them too, because there's there's probably a little bit you can learn from uh, just studying and looking at some of the different Pokemon that are out there. Uh, there's a lot of really cool designs, and they could inform uh, an upcoming mock for you, perhaps. Let's move on now to the next mock, and I really do enjoy this one. This is Bowser, of course, from Super Mario Brothers, uh, and this is built by Nathaniel. So, well, King Bowser, I suppose I should say. That's technically the name of the mock. Anyway, besides the point... I adore this. Uh, again, incredibly accurate to the source material. Yeah, you could argue maybe this skin's more of a yellow than a tan, but yeah, yeah whatever. It still looks cool. Uh, and it's Bowser. It looks great. I love how he's used a whole bunch of these different dish pieces on here. And to different uh, different sort of um, results and uh, different outcomes are achieved by that. So specifically, let's look at the shell there, using some of those very large dish pieces. They very much form the kind of bulk of that shell, and they kind of overlap over each other, so it kind of covers up some of those gaps there. And it looks great. Really effectively manages to look like a shell there, uh, and it's just through overlapping a few different pieces there. Not a lot of pieces specifically being used, but uh, you get the job done, that's for sure. I still like, too, how he's used some of these printed uh, dish pieces here, uh, just to kind of more effectively match the original source material. These specific dish, uh, dish pieces are from a Rebel set that were used on a, a speeder bike there. Uh, and they're a great piece. And it's a lovely little bit of printing that came on them. Um, I really do adore that piece there. And it, it's, it just adds this nice little beautiful pop of color there. Uh, and it, I think it's always great to see uh, printed pieces or stickered pieces being used on mocks to great avail. I think this is a, a beautiful shining example of that. So really, really nice addition there. Some other dish pieces that are being used, we see some on like the nostrils, we see some on the arms, we see some boat studs as well, kind of around the jaw, where kind of the top and the, uh, kind of where um, the top, yeah, the top and the bottom of the jaw meet in the middle, as well as towards the front of his jaw and kind of around his chin, we can see some of those boat studs. There's some on the, uh, the feet as well, uh, and there's even a, a green dish there on the side of the head. There's a lot of dishes being used. And again, I think to really great avail. And the reason I say that is, these dishes naturally have that sort of rounded uh, curvature to them. And so does Bowser, the original source material, you know? He he just has this more kind of like rounded aesthetic to him. 
uh, very similar to like all the different characters uh, across Super Mario. They have this more kind of like playful, rounded, curved look to them that kind of gives them this more uh, sort of like fun and excitable, uh, happy vibe, which you know, I think is laden in all the brand work and stuff for Super Mario, but it's also just the kind of aesthetic that they play around with as well. And of course, you can mimic that in Lego. But I also think if you are trying to naturally create a more sort of humanoid, lifelike look to different body parts, having that slight kind of curvature to them, that sort of smoothness uh, and that kind of natural kind of like plump to it uh, is a great way of mimicking a natural human body. Of course, Bowser's not a human, but, uh, you know, he has humanoid features to him. Uh, So I think using some of those dish pieces is a great way of achieving that because like we saw with the shell on the back, you get this curvature to it. You get this sort of uh, roundness to it. And you very effectively can match that source material there. And dish pieces, yeah, they're fun to play with, you know? And they certainly get the job done here and they certainly match how the original looks. So I think that's a great way of using those pieces and it's cool to to, to see them being used in so many different ways and pretty much always to really great avail. So... Definitely play around with some dishes. I think it's a, a really, really smart idea. We can also see kind of on like the, the kind of rib belly area of Bowser here, uh, a bunch of those tail pieces in tan. They're kind of laid next to each other. Uh, and it has, again, has this really nice curvature to it. It looks really, really crisp. And I think it, it works in a very similar way to those dishes before. You get that very organic, natural looking uh, roundness to it, which perfectly mimics that of a more humanoid style body. It's really cool. It's really, really cool. Overall, yeah, again, I think this greatly matches the source material. I love how he's used the red, like, fur uh, elements there, the dark red fur elements that came on some Chima sets. Those, again, uh, perfectly match that uh, area of Bowser's head. And uh, overall, he looks incredibly menacing. It's great to see pieces being used in such nice ways. And it's uh, really cool, too, how he's using so many different system pieces in this sort of almost more, like, kind of cobbled together design. I think it's quite different from stuff we see typically. Often a lot of designs that I've showcased in the past, not all of them, but uh, it's a trend that you can notice. People can use more sort of strip back designs where they'll use maybe like three or four different pieces and that's the bulk of the leg. But as a result, you get a very sort of smooth, organic, uh, naturalistic design that you know perfectly matches that of a, a humanoid or whatever it is that they're building. But sometimes you get stuff like this, which uses a plethora, big, huge amount of pieces and still very effectively matches that source material, matches that organic look and still looks really nice. It's just a different aesthetic, though. It's a little bit less uh, sort of smooth and simplistic. Instead, it's more detailed, but accurate. And um, it's really cool. It's really cool. It's a very different way of approaching building. Uh, and I think it's kind of similar to like what I do when I build system mocks is I myself like to use a lot of different pieces. I I tend to buy a lot of really small parts uh, and then um, use a whole bunch of them in what it is that I make. I tend to not use kind of like larger scale pieces to kind of cover a larger surface area or to uh, really effectively mimic something. My my personal style, I tend to, to, to lean towards smaller stuff and be really intricate with how I build stuff. I think this is a very similar approach to that. And Maybe that's not how you build. Maybe it is how you build. But I think it's this is a great testament to how both styles are equally valid and can work so well. You know, different designs might call for different things and your your personal aesthetic. You know, maybe you'd build this using half the amount of pieces he has. But I just think it's worth noting how he built it uh, and how, how awesome it can still look as a result. And I think different builders would have built it in a different way. But that's just as valid and just as cool, really. So... Really, really awesome stuff here. I think there's a lot we can learn from this Bowser mock. It's really well done. Let's uh, now move on to the next mock in this episode. This one, I think, is a pretty cool one. This is by Ezreal, or Easy Real. I don't know how you pronounce that name. And this is called No Straight Roads Neon J. Or more specifically, this mock is called Neon J. It's from the video game No Straight Roads. Now, I've, of course, played a lot of Pokemon. I've played a very little bit of Legend of Zelda. Uh, and I played very little bit of Super Mario, but I, of course, know a lot just through cultural osmosis about Zelda and Mario. I've never heard of this game before. It is called No Straight Roads. Apparently, it's for Nintendo Switch. It looks pretty cool. I think some of the little images that I've got here, I think, you know, make this game look pretty pretty schmick. Uh, and I think the character design on this guy here, Mr. Neon J, is awesome. Um, so thank you, uh, Ezreal, Easy Real, for um, showing me this. Uh, I think... Um, 
it's not something I would have known about otherwise. And that's a really cool design. Uh, and heck, maybe you're sitting there and you're like, how do you not know about this game, Ben? This is such a, such a you know popular game or whatever. Or maybe you're sitting here and you're like, yeah, I haven't heard of this either. But I think that's still really important. Maybe there is a really obscure video game you've played, but you really like it. It's your, it's your, your sort of um, little uh, guilty pleasure, you know? It may not be super popular, but you still find a lot of enjoyment out of it. Why not build some characters from it, you know? If it brings you joy, that's kind of what this whole hobby's all about, isn't it? So, uh, by all means, look into some of those more obscure things that you love and see if you can build something from it. Or don't. It's completely up to you. You do what you want, you build what you want. That's that's also what it's all about at the end of the day. But regardless, we're going to talk about Neon J from this super cool video game. So, let us dive in. I absolutely love the fur coat design that he's done here, uh, using a bunch of those different um, sort of tooth bracket pieces there. Uh, really effectively matches it, and it looks cool. And, and overall, by the way, I really want to specify this. Just looking at the Lego version that Ezreal's built here versus the source material, th they look so close to each other, it's instantly recognizable in that regard. So really bang up good job on that. Um, I love the overall sort of suit design on this guy here, this white suit. Uh, I love how he's used a whole bunch of system pieces to really effectively match uh, the way that those pants sort of flow down towards the bottom there. And I also love how the upper arm design uses some of those ratchet pieces there so that you can really get a fair bit of posability uh, on his uh, elbows and arms in general. Uh, it's a really nice design. And, and there's actually a really good example of what I was just talking about with Bowser. That arm design there, not using a whole bunch of pieces. Really those kind of ratchet joints and other you know, various like cylinder pieces and things. But it gets the job done. It, again, matches the source material and looks like that of a suit. Whereas when we looked at Bowser, you probably would have, if they were building that arm design, used a plethora of different pieces, doubled the piece count on that arm design. But it still gets the job done, and it still looks like the source material. Again, two different ways of building something, but both equally valid, and it's just really important. So it doesn't matter what your build style is, build it the way you want to, and the way that makes you happy. That's what's important. Uh, but yeah, yeah, great way of getting a bit of posability there, using those ratchet joint pieces. A lot of system sets and pieces come with a lot of ways of connecting stuff, whether it's those ratchet joints, whether it's a bunch of different clips and tiles and things that interlock together, or some of the larger ratchet joints, or some of the sort of ball and socket pieces that have system connections. There's a lot of different ways that you can connect stuff, and a lot of it's also compatible with uh, a lot of different Bionicle uh, sets and things. So certainly worth looking into some of your system stuff if you're looking to find ways of getting... Uh, connections very similar to that of the CCBS ball and socket connections. Uh, there's a lot of different pieces you can play around with, a lot that are smaller too, so if you want to build a little smaller scale mock, that's certainly a way that you could do so. I think that's uh, pretty cool and a, and a great way of approaching something, so really, really cool to see. Additionally too, I, I, I spoke with um, Ezreal about this uh, head design here, because uh, when he showed me some of the pictures of this uh, early on as he was still building it, uh, I wasn't sure what the head design was. I was like, do you use pieces for that? Like, what is that? He said, ultimately, that it's just a, a custom sticker. And, of course, I think there's nothing wrong with that. It gets the job done and it makes it uh, look incredibly accurate in that regard. Um, but all by all means, too, I can understand that maybe, you know, you don't want to use stickers or you don't have access to, you know, quality stickers that you want to use or anything. But, you know, I'm sure if you played around with that a bit, you'd be able to uh, achieve that head design using just system pieces. Uh, it might be a bit more difficult and it might be hard to get it super, super accurate, but you might be able to. But... Always important to, to note that, hey, at the end of the day, if you do want to use a sticker, whether it's custom or official, it might just be the perfect thing. And also, I love head designs like this, where they are this weird, goofy, like, radar computer screen, you know? Why should you put a fleshy human face? Why not? Why not put a TV screen for a head? Great idea. It gets the job done, and it works. I love it. It's great. Uh, and more suits on mocks. Suits on mocks is an underrated but beautiful thing. I like it. I like it a lot. But uh, yeah, really, really solid. Great to see um, all the different uh, fantastic techniques that have been poured into this. Uh, and overall, great use of, uh, of some system pieces here and a bang up job on matching the source material there. Love your work. Let's move on now to the final mock. This is by uh, good sir Mike Neves. Uh, and this mock here is from StarCraft 2 and it's called Hydralisk. So yeah, like I said, it's from it's the video game StarCraft. Uh, and this thing is absolutely awesome. So immediately one of the things that always has grabbed me about this mock, because this mock is a bit old at this point, is uh, Mike posted this uh, a little while back, but uh, I've, I, I, I always um, I always kind of think about this mock, to be honest. It's uh, 
it's, it's really left a lasting impression for me because I think there's a, a lot of beautiful techniques on this. I love how he's done the kind of like carapace at the front here of his tail, how it sort of like folds over each other. Like when we when we look at the source material there, I don't know, it kind of looks like some sort of weird like scaly armor of sorts. I don't know. And the way that he's translated that into Lego bricks is gorgeous. Just the idea of using a, a bunch of different slope pieces and different um, plates and bricks and things and creating this sort of like V-shaped, little kind of L-shaped um, uh, sort of design. Uh, and then building a, a, a variety of those in different shapes and sizes uh, and then layering them over the top of each other. What a great way of achieving that um, yeah carapace bug-like uh, sort of scaled design of sorts. It's awesome it's awesome and again because that uses system pieces you could build those very large or very small depending on what it is that you're trying to build yourself so i think that's awesome and also when we study the whole tail a uh, really great way of integrating that with more dishes very similar to the dishes we saw on bowser there uh and uh as well uh, integrating that in with a bunch of ccbs um uh hero factory shells in purple uh, those just flow beautifully one into the other and creates this fantastic looking organic, uh, almost sort of like snake-like design. I could very easily see that being translated on some sort of, I don't know, Medusa, Yanti, snake person, uh, or just straight up a snake, you know, whatever it is that you're building. That's a, a gorgeous design. And I love how it transitions from being a lot smaller into a lot sort of thicker and then transitions into the rest of the body. It's an absolutely awesome design there. I uh, really, really like that. So again, something you could easily do and uh, various techniques within that that I think you could easily translate to something else. It's great how those dishes fill in the individual gaps between the CCBS and the system, uh, but it's it's lovely when that sort of all kind of comes together and uh, forms this great organic design. I love it. Uh, again, some more sort of thin, more kind of spiddly arms here, but uh, you know, to some degree matches the source material. Also, to some degree doesn't. They do look thin, but they could be a bit more armored to some degree. Although I say that and look at these again, they are kind of pretty armored. But again, that ties into what I was saying. You know, are you going to build it a little more simplistic using less pieces and get the job done and nail it like Mike has done here? Or do you want to use more pieces? What does the situation call for? What does your style call for? Play with it. See what happens. See what works. It's completely up to you. Uh, I also love the head design on this guy here. Once again, using those uh, Exoforce robot arm pieces that we see all the time. Such a beautiful Use it, uh, useful piece, very versatile, uh, and it creates a very, very accurate, very creepy, sinister-looking head design here. It's gorgeous. Using some flex tube to to really kind of wrap them around in some fashion and um, really get them to look uh, more more organic, more kind of bug-like, more sort of alien in nature. It's it's fantastic. The eye design here appears to be using some flex tube, and you could also say it's a bit more similar to uh, what Jafer did before. Uh, and yeah, I love that the eye is a little bit smaller, very similar to the source material there. It does make it just look that fair bit more creepy. It's really, really cool. Um, overall, I think this is an absolutely gorgeous mock, some great techniques uh, in there, uh, and um, stuff that you could easily translate yourself into uh, other different mocks, but also perfectly matches that source material. Uh, I love seeing all that purple being used there for that more sort of like gut-like texture on it. A uh, very uh, simple but effective way of doing that. This is awesome. At the time that Mike built this, he said this was actually a commission. I don't know if Mike is still doing commissions. I, I honestly don't know. You'd have to ask him yourself. But hey, if you want Mike to build something for you, you want to pay him and he'll send it your way, that's certainly something you could do. So uh, by all means, get in contact with Mike. See if uh, see if he is still doing commissions. I don't know if those are still available or not, but it's definitely worth asking him. So uh, yeah, absolutely awesome mock here of the uh, Hydralisk from StarCraft II. Very, very cool. And that wraps us up for this video game inspired mocks episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series. By all means, I can happily do more video game inspired mock uh, episodes. I've done a bunch in the past, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. Uh, and um, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and hopefully some video game characters or just seeing them translated in Lego have inspired you to build something yourself. If they have, by all means, let me know. I'm always, always hungry to know when the show's inspired someone. That's always a, a good feeling for myself personally. So don't be afraid to reach out there. If that has been the case, I'm always happy to see what it is that you've built. Always happy to uh, hear if it has inspired you or not. Very cool. Uh, so if you enjoyed the mocks that you saw in today's episode, be sure to check the links in the description below. There's links to everyone's work there. Be sure to maybe even drop a comment, drop a like, drop a favorite or whatever on those people's uh, original like flickers and social medias and things. Because, hey, 
they're the guys who built it. May as well give them a bit of love if you can. Additionally, in the description below is the submission email. You're also seeing it on your screen right now. So if you want to submit some of your own mocks to the show and get them featured on the show one day, the best way to do that is very simple. All you have to do is send me an email to that email. Uh, in the email, include some pictures or any other information you want. If you want to write a whole seven-page backstory or if you just want to put a couple sentences or give me the name and your name or whatever, put whatever information you feel is necessary into that email. Send it to me and one day it'll appear on the show. I've got a lot of submissions to work through though, so your patience is key, pretty please. Uh, additionally, one last thing, while you're there in the description below, you'll see some links to my own social media. So if you want to see some of the things that I've got going on, that's the perfect place to look. Uh, in the in those links includes you know my Flickr, Facebook, all that sort of stuff, but also my Patreon. So if you're interested in uh, supporting me, whether that's just a uh, you know, dollar a month or whatever the heck you want, um, there are different tiers and rewards and things there for you to do so, including access to my private Discord server where you can have nice private chats with me, uh, or if you so please. Um, you can also uh, have access to my uh, uh, personal podcast as well, where uh, I will uh, do some additional bonus content over there if you're interested. So, very cool, very nice. If that's something that you're interested in doing, I would very much appreciate it. But if not, that's okay too. It's completely your choice. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Happy building and bye for now. Woo!